Man, have I had some fun today and yesterday. Um, so yesterday I found this two-part video series. It's about, you know, about 45, 50 minutes, um, but it's really great. It, it, it was very fast-paced, and it just answered the questions that I had, which was like, how do I follow the logic from the software to the FPGA? And so this guy is going to make basically a Hello World program where there's going to be that kind of communication and there's IO going to both. And um, he does a he does a pretty stupid module. Um, so he does an AND gate with the two. There's two toggle switches on this board. So he does an AND gate with those. And then he feeds the output of that into a software. And the software, all it does is negates it so that you have a half hardware and half software NAND gate. But it's just an exercise in how all this stuff flows. Um, and so then I made my own, I made, I kind of, I sort of replicated what he did, but then I made uh, this today, which is my first kind of project from scratch. Um, so it really wasn't bad at all. Um, it's just, there are certain things you have to kind of just add, like straight up ignore. Like you have to, like these blocks, you just have to ignore them. I mean, there's a process that you step through. And then these blocks right here, you kind of ignore those. Um, those get sort of automatically generated. Um, so you'll come down here and you'll specify like these Axie GPIO groups. Um, it's kind of weird. There's, there's like a, um, these are kind of like their hardware instantiations. And then this is kind of, it's also a hardware instantiation, but it's, it gets compiled down into the like libraries and CQ. Basically your board support packages are pulled from this. Um, and so for this one, I am using, uh, these are the pins that I'm using. And this was another thing, like this was not in the board support package when you install it into Vivado, this RDE Z720 board. You had to, I had to go and find this master XDC and basically it has all the pin definitions and you just uncomment the ones that you want and then you can change the name of them if you'd like. Um, so, um, so there's kind of two control services that I got. There's a, there's momentary push buttons. There's four of those. And then there's four LEDs, which are kind of right above those with the same number. So I've got those included and they are basically you know, they're, they're four bit wires, four bit arrays. And then there's a switch. There's two toggle switches. Um, and I've got those set up. It's just a two bit array. And then above those two toggle switches, there are two RGB LEDs. So switch zero has LED four and those are the RGB values for LED four. Then here's the RGB values for LED5, which is above switch one. So basically I've got four, I guess six lights, four momentary buttons, and then two switches. And just playing with that. And um, so I wanted to do some PWM control. So we'll just look at, so this LED4, it's got red, green, and blue. But these are digital outputs, so they're not analog. So what you have to do is pulse the red on and off and the green on and off, you know, at different duty cycles to create apparent brightness. That's how they all work. And so this is the uh, LED driver thing I made. So it has these outputs, these are digital outputs, and they these are being pulse modulated very quickly. And then it has two inputs, well, two system inputs. It's got a clock and then a PWM count uh, signal, which is generated from a PWM counter. And so this thing's pretty simple. It, it, it has a clock that comes in, and then it has this counter that comes out. Um, and then I've got a clock out so that I can freeze the clock with a switch if I need to. But really, it's just got a clock in and this count out. 
and the clock comes in, I, you know, we know the frequency of that is 100 megahertz. And so we know 100 megahertz comes in, and what we want out of this is a this 8-bit register. We want it to count up and then count down, count up and count down, like a triangle. And then the period of this triangle waveform, that or the frequency of this triangle signal, is the PWM, uh, PWM rate, whatever kilohertz that is. And so, but all this is doing is really just outputting a, a counter which counts up and then it counts down, and then it counts up and then it counts down, and then it does this at some PWM rate that we've determined. Um, and then, like I said, it also can freeze the clock. Um, and so, each of these has a PWM count that comes in, and then it has the RGB values. And so, these are I just pass them in like this, so like red is the first eight bits, then the next eight, then the next eight for red, green, blue. And um, this is actually a really simple little module. It just looks, and so you have, you know, eight bit values for red, green, and blue, and it says, okay, if the red value that I'm requested, you know, because this, the RGB values themselves comes from the software. So the software will write to that, it'll write three 8-bit values to this little bus here, and then it'll say, okay, if the red value that I have right now, if that's greater than the uh, PWM count, which you remember is a triangle wave, if it's greater than that, then the red is on, if it's less than that, the red is off. So it's really just as simple as that. Um, of course, I combined all of them, but if you just look at red, it says if the current red value we're getting from software is greater than the count, then the digital output is high, otherwise it's low. And so it's kind of hard to visualize how that achieves PWM, but when that triangle wave is going really, really fast, it does kind of make sense. Because you can imagine as, as red approaches zero, the amount of time that it's going to be ab you know, above the top of the triangle there, it's going to be off most of the time. So, it's, that's just a simple way I found of doing that. And then the PWM counter is it's really simple. I mean, it's there is one register here, so there's an 8-bit register that we're counting on. Um, of course, you there's also an internal register, because that's an external register that's going outside, and then we have one internal register, which is one bit, and it just zero for counting up and one for counting down. That's all it does. So you know you initialize those in the beginning, and then you say um, first you check the direction. You say if the PWM count is at its maximum, then change the direction to down. If it's at its minimum, change the direction to up. So we achieve the triangle. And then the next thing that it does is it just says if we're going up. Add one if we're going down. Subtract one. So it's really it's the, 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 these things are really simple when you think about them the right way. And then you get to have a lot of fun with drawings. I love drawings. And so, wow, these are everywhere. We should reroute that. But you can see that the output for LED zero goes to this one. And then these. Output directly to these LEDs. And then we have we had some other stuff, um, kind of a pass-through system here as well. So there's three buttons, those three momentary buttons, then the four single color LEDs. I have those passed through the software. So you have you know four buttons here, and they go into the software, and then the software can drive the four LEDs that are above the buttons. So it, you would imagine that you know the buttons themselves are driving the LEDs, but really it's the software that's reading the button values and then latching whatever you do. So the software will, will latch whatever button combination you put in there. That's just, just more practice. And then um, 
But yeah, so I mean, the only ones, you know, these are the only modules I designed. I designed this LED driver, which is just this one module. I have two instantiations, or I got two copies of it here, connected to different physical pins and stuff. And then I've got this counter. So you have just, those are the two things that I wrote. So this diagram, these three modules right here is the only things that I created. Everything else, this thing will automatically, you know, for the most part, it will automatically create all this stuff for you. You do have to explicitly add these blocks, but once you figure out what those do, I mean, it's really simple. Um, and then, you know, you just do the stuff, generate the bitstream, export it, and then you launch your SDK. And then now all this stuff should look really familiar. I finally understand what all this stuff means. And, um, so let's go in there with the terminal. It's going really fast right now. So I've got, uh, the, you know, the super loop here. It runs, where's it at? It runs as fast as it can go. But then I have this L1 loop that runs at whatever your L1 frequency is. So L1 frequency, I have a 60 hertz. And then I have, uh, yeah, that stuff. So the main loop runs as fast as it can go, but then it just software pulls and checks. Okay, if it's, if we're past the count, then, you know, reset the count and then do the L1 processing block, which, so this processing block happens every 60 hertz. I just didn't want to blow out the serial, serial stuff there. Um, and you can see here where, this is where I latch the button. Because so if you hold down a combination of buttons, it'll latch those LEDs. As far as the RGB goes, I kind of did something just a little, I don't know, I thought it would make it smooth. and It, it, it did. There's no kind of pattern to it or anything, but uh, there's just... I'm just increasing an angle from 0 to 2 pi, and then um, that one base angle, I have three different angles, or two other angles that are kind of phase shifted from that, and then I'm just calculating these red, green, and blue values from that, so that you, just so the LEDs kind of do a smooth, slow transition. And then you see every, every, should be every uh, four seconds, looks like you should see a cycle. It's going too fast to see, but I've got it so that uh, 0 0.25 hertz, so like it, four seconds to go full circle for that angle. Kind of a slow, gradual LED thing. Um, and then, you know, there's some I.O. stuff. And this is the same with Arduino, where you set pin mode. It's just a little bit more explicit. Uh, you have to, you know, create these I device ID handles and initialize them. And then, you know, you set the direction, input or output. And in the main loop, you know, so we have one input, which is the 4-bit button array. And so you have to pull that. So you have to pull that and then... Um, right now I'm using global variables, so I'm just setting the actual 24-bit value because remember, remember the it's a 24-bit lane going from the software to the PWM driver, and then the first eight bits is red, second's green, and then you have blue. Um, so I'll just do those there. I guess I could have done them somewhere else, but but it reads the button, and then it calculates those, and then it writes. Uh, and then this is just kind of like your digital write sort of thing. And then the LED 4-bit uh, is kind of set down here, so it's a global as well. And then this is where the L1 block, you know, it's software poles and then enters the L1 block around, around 60 hertz. It's not exact, but it's pretty close. And it, it doesn't wander from there. It, it won't wander from that. So it's Pretty basic, if I not be so lazy, let me go up here and push a button and see if we can't 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Let's see if I can press all four at once. They gave me 16. My fingers are too fat. I am so close. Oh, well, I guess it, obviously it's 15 because there's zero, but. And then you don't, you don't see the, the state of the LED array, which is above those buttons, but if you hold down the buttons, it will latch. Ah, I need some debouncing in there. Did not think about that. But anyways, this is just me playing around. But um, yeah, I'll make a little thing. I uh, guess I'll record this thing working just so you can see what it does. It doesn't do anything special.